Greetings and welcome to a new video. We continue with the discrete time systems and the stability using the jury stability test. This will be our example number three. And again, we will work out the calculations step by step and verify these in MATLAB simulations. In this case, we have the following closed up discrete time system given. In this case, you can see it is a fourth order system. So we have four poles and we have an addition two zeros, one at 0 0.1, another one at 0 0.9. Same question in place here, determine if the system is stable. Now we have dealt with the second order system in the previous example. And also in the first example, we have seen a third order system. This will be a fourth order system. So this will be a little bit more detailed. So let's work it out step by step. First, we start with the fourth order polynomial. This is the general form. So we see an a4 and then z to the power four. And then in addition, a3, z to the power three. In the same manner, we have the coefficient for each factor for the polynomial. Now we have our characteristic equation. Characteristic equation is this, the denominator of this transfer function, which is this z to the power of four minus 12, 1.2, I mean, z cubed, etc. And that will be, of course, equated to zero. Now we need to like to know the coefficient and coefficient is determined by comparing the terms. So we have the a4, which is one, a3, which is minus 1.2, a2, which is 0 0.07, a1 is 0 0.3 and a0 is minus 0 0.08. So we have now everything for the coefficients. Now let's now look at the solutions. How do we start? Always first check is the step one is Check the first conditions. Now we have always the condition that the absolute value of the lowest uh, index must be smaller than the AN. And AN is actually the highest index, which in this case, using the four order polynomial or four order system, we have N is four. So that means absolute value of A0 must be smaller than A4. Now we know A0, which is an absolute value of that minus 0 0.08 must be uh, uh, small than a4 and a4 is one so that is indeed math so the second condition must be that the characteristic equation evaluated at z equals one must be larger than one so let's check that you substitute in this expression here in the dz only one for your z so you get one to the power four minus 1.2 times and one to the power three, etc. The result will be 0 0.09. This is indeed larger than zero. So again, the second condition is also met. The third condition is given by this. So this is the final condition in the step, first step is the minus one quantity to the power of n, which is our order, times the Correct this equation evaluated at minus one. And again, that must be larger than zero. So again, we have a four for our n and the rest are exact same as before. You only use minus one instead of one for your z. You calculate this, you will get 1.89, which is also larger than zero. So we meet the three conditions. Okay, so we can move on. If this is of course failing, so one of them is not true, you can stop, you can say this system is not stable. So we just continue and we now need to set up the jury table. Before we do that, we need to first determine how much rows we will get in our table and also how much constraint we get. The n is here the order of your system. So for an nth order system, we have two n minus three rows. That means two times four will be eight minus three will be five rows. So we will get more uh, rows and columns in our jury table in this case. Now we have n is four, so that will be four plus one will be five constraints. So we will need to check, we already have check three, so we need to check in addition two constraints. Okay, let's then set up the jury table. This is the general jury table. For this four order system, you start at zero to, z to the power z, uh, zero, up to z to the power four. And you, you can see one, two, three, four, five, rows that's actually the condition we have determined here now the a0 up to a4 and also a4 up to a0 we already know so we can determine that but we also need to determine the b0 b1 b2 b3 etc 
in order to check the stability. So let's first substitute the values we know, which is which are the coefficients. So this is a minus 0 0.08 up to 1, and then a reverse order also in the second row. So we have this. Now we know we have now the b0, etc. So how do you determine that? That's actually our next step. B0 is in this uh, form written. How do you determine that actually? B0 is actually given by a determinant of a matrix, which is uh, composed of this row and the last row. So you use the first row here and the last row here, and you make a two by two matrix, and then use a determinant. So it's actually shown here. So A0, A4, A4, A0. You calculate the values, you substitute the values and determine the determinant. Determinant is of course always this number times that number minus the product of these two numbers and you will get here minus 0.994 and we will use this later. Now, how is the B1 going? It's very similar to B0. You always use again the first column. So again you make a matrix but then you go one you shift actually one to the right for a column, so you take the A3 and A1. So this is actually the setup. So every, always the same left column, but the right column will change. And again, the determinant, you substitute every, again the values, and you will get this value 1.18 for B1. So B2 is again a, a similar uh, business. You take this first column, but now again you shift one step to the left, and you will now take this column. So you can see it's A2 and A2. Everything in place here. Now use the formula for the determinant again, and you will get minus 0 0.0756. The final one is B3. Now you will get this one, but now again, one shift to the left, and you will get one A1 and A3. Substitute everything. This will be our value for B3. So we have then minus 0 0.204. Now we have everything. So what is then the condition we need to check? Let's first write down the values for B0 up to B3 and also in the reverse order. This is now the jury table up to now. We need to also determine the C0, C1, C2, etc. So we have three values to go. Let's also do that. That goes also in the similar way. So if you look at the C0, you need to now determine or set up matrix using the two rows on above that row actually. So you use the C0 and for that you use this row, I mean this column and the column here. You can see that here. Now if you calculate that, just use the values we have determined, you can see that here. You will get now this C0 value which is 0 0.946. So what is the C1 in a similar form? This column and this column. So we will actually get this one. Substitute the values, you will now get minus 1.18. The final one is C2. You will get this and this column, so you can see that. To substitute everything you get, and you will have 0 0.315. Okay, now we have everything. So we can now fill in the complete jury table. We have now this, and this will be then written in this form. Now the jury table table complete. Now we can also verify the last two constraints because we need to check five constraints in total. We already checked three, so we have two constraints left. The first, the the fourth one is this one. B zero must be in absolute sense larger than B three. So B zero is here. I mean here, and B three is here. So B zero is this row and that is actually here so we can say absolute value of minus 0 0.994 is indeed larger than absolute value of minus 0 0.214 so again the check so the first condition is also checked the final one the fifth condition is the c0 must be larger than c2 an absolute value so this is the column the row again and the values are shown here so it means the 0 0.946 must be larger than 0 0.315. Again, that's checked. 
So we can see all of the conditions are met. So we can say using also the one, two, three, we already determined from the previous slide. We can say this system is stable because all five constraints are met. Okay, this is the calculation. Now we need to, of course, simulate this and check the results. So let's first start, uh, give you the MATLAB code, the script, and also the result when I run this in the command window of MATLAB. This is the MATLAB script I prepared. So the Z as the discrete time parameter, also the S for the continuous time parameter. We have the formula for our transfer function. This is given here, just type in what you have for this example. Step G will generate a unit step response. Pol G will give you the pulse of your system and R locus will give you the locus plot, sort of imagine the real axis and also the location of the poles in the graphical way. So let's run this. What you get is, now this is run, you will get this. So this is actually what we had. If you place it in a different form, then you can see directly your poles. So that means actually zero pole game model or game format. You can see 1.5 times the zeros and the poles. And I can already see here that everything here is smaller than absolute sense, smaller than zero point. I mean, uh, the absolute value of all the poles are smaller than one. That's also shown here. So you get a minus 0 0.5. 0 0.8, 0 0.5, and 0 0.4. All of them all, all poles are inside the unit circle. This concludes also that this system is also stable. So looking at the code, the script, running in the MATLAB command window, we conclude the same thing as we have calculated. You can also check that in the unit step response to verify this. So this is unit step response. What you see is that there's some overshoot, 46%, and also some value, final value. But it has a final value, which is not exploding. And it also has some overshoot, which is limited. So we can say overshoot is less than 100%, not going up to very high uh, values. And also the response reaches a steady state value. Again, concluding that this system is stable, looking at the unit step response in a different form. Now, root logs plot. This is the root logs plot using that R locus command, R locus of G. And this is then for the discrete time system. You can see the poles here. So we can see here the pole at minus 0 0.5, at 0 0.4, here at, uh, and again the poles here. So we have minus 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, so minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5, and then the final one 0 0.4. So everything is actually also graphically shown here. This thing here is the unit circle. So everything is inside. So we can see also graphically directly the system is stable. So again, the conclusion, all poles are inside the unit circle. The system is then stable. So we have now verified this fourth order discrete time system in different ways, running in the MATLAB command window, generating unit step response, also graphically showing the poles in the root locus plot. All right, this was for this example. I hope this clarifies the situation also for a different uh, order system. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another interesting video. Take care.